Howdy and welcome to another episode of the Spaghetti Westerns podcast. I'm Tom Betts, your host. This is season five, episode 13, overall episode number 113. Uh, Today we're going to talk about the history of the Spaghetti Western and the magnificent brutes of the West. Sorry, but (laughs) we got to cover it. Uh, Whatever happened to segment will be Stephen Boyd. Uh, Who are those guys will be Jose Bodalo. If you don't know the name, you'll recognize the face. Film of the week is A Taste for Killing. Uh, Autograph of the week I have. I've got a book of the week for a change. Uh, Also a poster of the week, sort of. Uh, We've got a CDLP of the week. And then I'll wrap things up with news of the week. And since we're on here every other week, uh, it'll be a little bit longer than normal. Okay, let's get started. Uh, History of the Spaghetti Westerns, 1964 still. We are going to talk about the Magnificent Brutes of the West. This is an Italian, Spanish, French film co-production produced by Mario Siciliano, Alvaro Mancorni, Anna Maria Cretian, and Emiliano Piedra. Uh, The Italian title is Magnifici Brutos del West. Spanish title is Los Brutos en el Oeste. French title is Las Terres de el Oeste. English titles are Bad Men of the West and The Magnificent Brutes of the West. It's directed by Fred Wilson, who's actually Marino Girolami. That's Endo Castellari's father. Uh, Story and screenplay are by Matthias McDonald, who in reality is Tito Carpi. Fred Wilson is Mariano Girolami. Cinematography is by Al World. That's Alvaro Mancorni and Corey. It's an Eastman color and dialoscope. Music is by Frank Mason. That's Francesco DeMasi, and it runs 98 minutes. Uh, When I see these uh, Americanized names on some of these crummy films, I wonder if they're really trying to make this look like an American film, or are they just embarrassed to have their real names show up in the credits. Uh, The cast consists of Ibrutos, which is Lee, played by Dino Cassio, Artie, played by Etero Ittori Bruno, Johnny, J-H-O-N-N-Y, played by Gianni Zulo, and Pep Ilio Piatti. The sheriff or marshal is played by Gary Smith, who in reality is J.R. Stewart, Giacomi Rossi, Rossi Stewart, Tom Jackson is played by Derry Cowell. Lucy is played by Emma Pinella. We also have Philip, which is played by Alfredo Mayo. Also in the cast is Ben, played by Pietro Cecciarelli. The Fresno Sheriff is played by Julio Pena. And Slim Henchman, Henchman is played by Ignacio Shoulder, who's in reality Pedro Sanchez. Other names uh, you recognize might recognize our the stage office clerk is played by Kirk Burt, which is Alberto Savanini. And the Fresno troublemakers are Arthur Red, played by uh, Giovanni Pazafini under the alias, Emilio Messina and his brother Roberto. And this film is available is on VHS, it's not available, I'm sorry, on VHS, DVD, or Blu-ray. I wonder why. It is available on YouTube if you're brave enough to watch. Uh, The story goes as such. The Equatoro Brutos, consisting of Artie, Ittori Bruno, Lee, Gianni Zulo, and Pep Elio Piatti, have inherited a funeral parlor in Fresno, California. They arrive in town during a fierce gun battle. Thinking that it's a celebration honoring their arrival, they also begin shooting their guns into the air. But as luck would have it, the four inadvertently kill all the bad guys. Their first customer wants them to transport a coffin carrying Tom Jackson, played by Derry Cowell, to a remote remote location. In reality, he's faked his death, and the coffin contains a stolen treasure he wants to smuggle out of the town. During the trip, the four are attacked and captured by Indians. The chief of the tribe intends to give them as husbands to his four ugly daughters. After many adventures, the Brutos foil the plan to smuggle the treasure and turn the town laden with glory. But they cannot escape their fate 
with the four Indians and end up marrying the maidens. <clears throat> and just when we thought we had left the European comedy and parody westerns behind when A Fistful of Dollars was released the same year, some habits are hard to break, and these films continue to be made. Maybe they thought the spaghetti western was a flash in the pan and they were making fun of the genre at large. This film is like watching a Franco and Ciccio film and having twin brothers. We just get double the nonsense, slapstick, and stupidity. Their name fits them perfectly as it is brutal having to watch them in their annex. They were capitalizing on their popularity and the emergence of the new film genre popularity. Often in the spaghetti western comedies, the captives, instead of being burned at the stake, are forced to marry the chief's ugly daughter or daughters. Franco and Ciccio used this on the warpath, which is another example of this premise. In uh, actors' biographies, Equatro Brutos consisted of Lee, played by Dino Cassio, who was born on April 2nd, 1934, in Bari Apulia, Italy. He died in Rome on July 9th, 2012. Then there's Artie, played by Ettore Bruno. He's born in Turin, Piedmont, Italy on April 22nd, 1940. He's still alive. Gianni, played by Gianni Zullo, whose real name is Ervigio Zullo. He was born in Matera, Italy on March 8th, 1920 and died in Pianello Val Tidon, Emilia Romagna, Italy on May 12, 25. And the fourth member was Pep, played by Ilio Piatti, who was born in Milan, Italy, Lombardy, Italy, in 1926. He died there in 2016. The group was an Italian comedy team and, and were singers. They were very popular in Italy in the 1950s and 1960s. The group began in Turin with four members and eventually grew to five. They debuted as a group in 1957. and. One would sing a romantic song while the others would sing the chorus and make ugly faces. Their contorted facial expression led to them being called Brutos, and their moniker was born. Over the years, they recorded several single and LP releases and appeared in five films and on TV variety shows, including two appearances, believe it or not, on Ed Sullivan's Toast of the Town in both 62 and 63. The group had many different members over the years. The group disbanded in 1970, only to reform in 1992. Their last appearance was on television in 2002. Then we have Sheriff Marshal Gary Smith, played by J.R. Stewart, who in reality is Giacomo Rossi Stewart, born in Todi, Umbria, Italy, on August 25, 1925. He Died in Rome on October 20th, 1994. He's the father of director, writer, actor Kim Rossi Stewart, born in 1969, and stunt woman actress Valentina Rossi Stewart in 78. We covered him in greater detail in episode 34. Tom Jackson was played by Derry Cowell, born Andre Derricao in Vitel, Vasquez, Lorraine, France, on August 27th, 1925. As Derry Cowell, he came to prominence when he was cast by Sasha Jutri in Assassins de Velours, Assassins and Robbers, in 1956. Following this, he turned to acting in cinema roles and soon gained celebrity status with his role as Antoine Paralou in Le Tripoteur, The Tricycle, in 1957. Cowell appeared in two other European westerns, Don't Touch the White Woman, in 1973 as Major Archibald, and in Lucky Luke and the Daltons in 2004 as The Old Man. Cowell is married to a conductor, Nellie Marcon, from 48 to 65, and to, act, and to actress, Rolande Kalis, from 65 to 2006. Derry Cowell died in newly surcane France of lung cancer on February 14, 2006. He was 80 years old. Then we have Lucy Emma, played by Emma Panella. Manuela Ruiz Panella was born in Madrid, Spain on March 2, 1931. 
She was known by her stage name of Emma Panella and was a Spanish film and television actress. She was the d daughter of politician Ramon Ruiz Alonso, born in 1903, he died in 82, and actress Magdalena Panella Silva, and the granddaughter of actor Manuela Panella Moreno, born in 1880, he died in 1939. Her younger sisters, actress Elisa Montez, born in 1934 and still living, and Teresa Torella Pavez, born in 1939. She died in 2017. They also followed in the family's acting footsteps. The three sisters renounced using the Ruiz family name as an artistic name in the wake of their father's involvement in the murder of poet playwright Federico Garcia Lorca in 1936. Emma appeared in over 60 films and television series from 1950 to 2007. This was her only spaghetti western. In 1967, Emma Panella married producer Emiliano Piedra, who was born in 31. He died in 91. She died on August 27, 2007 in Madrid at the age of 76 of sepsis caused due to diabetes. Okay, now let's move on to whatever became of, or whoever, whatever became of, Stephen Boyd. Okay, whatever became of Stephen Boyd. Stephen Boyd was born William Stephen Miller, M-I-L-A-R. He was born in Glen Gormley, Ulster, Ireland on July 4th, 1931. He was the youngest of nine siblings born to Irish Canadian parents, James Alexander Miller and his wife Martha Boyd. At a very early age, William or Billy attended the local public elementary school and Ballyclare High School. At the age of 14, Boyd quit school to work and earn money to help support his family. He eventually joined the Ulster Group Theater where he learned the behind the scenes tasks of the theater. He became well known in Belfast for his contributions as a gravel voiced policeman on the Ulster radio program, The McCooies, the story of a Belfast family. <coughs> Excuse me. Boyd eventually worked his way up to character parts, and then starring roles. By 19, he had toured Canada with a summer stock company. In 1950, he made a coast-to-coast -coast tour of America with the Claire Tree Major Company performing a streetcar named Desire in the, re, re, in the lead role as Stanley Kowalski. Boyd later recalled this as the best performance I ever gave in my life. The Leicester Square Cinema recruited him to usher attendees during the British Academy Awards in the early 1950s. During the award ceremony, he was noticed by actor Sir Michael Redgrave, who used the connections to introduce Boyd to the director of the Windsor Repertory Group. At this point, Boyd's stage career in the UK began to flourish with performances in The Deep Blue Sea and Barnett's Follies. Boyd's first film role, which brought him acclaim, was a, as a pro-Nazi Irish spy in the movie, The Man Who Never Was. The movie was released in April, 1956. Shortly thereafter, he signed a 10-year contract with 20th Century Fox Studios, who began pre prepping him for Hollywood. But it was a while until Boyd actually set foot on a Hollywood back plot. Boyd's next stop was Portugal to make A Hill in Korea, which was also featured. Future film stars Michael Caine and Robert Shaw. Around the same time, French actress Brigitte Bardot was given the opportunity to cast her own leading man in her next movie after her success in And God Created Woman. She chose Boyd. The film was The Night Heaven Fell, directed by Roger Vadim in Paris and filmed in the region of Malaga, Spain, specifically the small whitewashed town of Mijas. Being in the Bardot spotlight added much to Boyd's film credits in addition to bringing him notice in Hollywood. Boyd finally arrived in Hollywood in January 1958 to take on his first true Hollywood role as the leader of a quartet of renegade outlaws in the 20th century Fox Western, The Bravados. 
also starring Lee Van Cleef, which starred Gregory Peck and Joan Collins. After the filming of The Bravados, which was complete in March 58, Boyd returned to Hollywood to audition for the coveted role of Masilla in MGM's upcoming role, Ben-Hur. Many act other actors, including Victor Mature, Kirk Douglas, Leslie Nielsen, and Stuart Granger had been considered for the part. The screen test convinced director William Myler, Weiler that Boyd, Boyd was the perfect villain. Weiler was right as Boyd won a Golden Globe for his performance. In 1958, he was married to MCA executive Mariella de Sarzana, but the marriage only lasted a year. Jumping ahead in Boyd's career, he founded his own production company, Boyd Productions, in 1968, and then was cast in his first Euro Western in 1968 with another villain role as Bosky Fulton in Shalico with Sean Connery and his former co-star Brigitte Bardot. He was to appear in another Western film in Spain simply called Bosky. Was the film based on Bosky Fulton's character? We'll never know as the picture was never made. In 1970, he made a silent cameo in Hanny Calder as Raquel, with Raquel Welch. In 73, he co-starred with Richard Crenna in a Louis L'Amour book-based film, The Man Called Noon, and in the same year, he played Captain Chadwell Willer in Those Dirty Dogs, starring Johnny Garco. Boyd sang the theme song, Riding with the Wind in My Face. He finished his European Western career co-starring with Hardy Krueger as Bill Artisan in 1975's Montana Trap, a.k.a. Potato Fritz. In all, Boyd appeared in 50 films, and his last appearance was as a guest star on Hawaii Five O's starring Jack Lord. He died after a round of golf with his wife Elizabeth Mills on June 2, 1977 in Granada Hills, California. The two had married the year previously. I'll post a list of uh, Boyd's film, European Western film credits on uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube after we complete this episode. Next, we'll move on to Who Are Those Guys and Jose Bodalo. Uh. Okay, who are those guys, Jose Bodalo? One of the interesting things about the spaghetti western genre is they gave opportunities to actors, actresses, and directors from all over the world to participate and, like the Americans, continue their careers, resurrect their careers, or make names for themselves as new names. Actor Jose Bodalo was such a person. He was born Jose Bodalo Zofoli in Cordoba, Argentina, on March 24, 1916. He was the son of actress-singer Eugenia Zovali. Born in 1900, she died in 1982, and actor-singer Jose Pepe Bodalo Montorio. He was born in 87 and died in 1962. As a young man, he wasn't interested in being an actor and studied medicine in Madrid and Salamanca. On the outbreak of the Spanish Civil War, he moved to Caracas, Venezuela with his family. At the age of 24, he joined his parents' theater company and made his first performance in a work entitled Madres Frente a la Guerra. At the same time, he became a professional soccer player and was a huge fan of the sport for the rest of his life. At the end of the 1940s, the family returned to Spain. In 1961, he joined the Maria Guerrero National Theater Company. He first appeared on screen in 1947's Al Josima, directed by Jose Lopez Rubio. Jose went on to appear in 120 films and television appearances between 1930 and 1985. Among those films were 10 spaghetti westerns, including most likely his best remembered ro role as General Hugo Rodriguez in 1965's Django, starring Franco Nero. Other performances include, uh, include Ringo's Big Night, starring William Berger as Tombstone Sheriff Sam Murdoch, 
Professionals for a Massacre with George Hilton, George Martin, and then Birds playing the role of El Primero. In 1969, he played Sheriff Klaus in Garingo with Anthony Stephan and Peter Lee Lawrence. And as General Mongo Alvarez in 1970's Capaneros with Franco Nero and Tomas Milian. And he ended his spaghetti Western career with an appearance as a Mexican general in 1971's Captain Apache, starring Lee Van Cleef. Modelo, Modalo then turned to television, where he is probably best known for his roles in television series Canas Ibarro in 1978. He capped his acting career with an appearance in Begin the Begin, a film that won the 1982 Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film, where he appeared in the role of Roxu. Bodala was married to Alicia Fernandez Tomas and father of Alicia Bodalo Fernandez, born in 1965, and Maria Jose Bodalo Fernandez, born in 67. He was the great uncle of actor Javier Bodalo, born in 1992. He died in Madrid of cancer on July 24th, 1985, at the age of 69. I'll post his European credits on Facebook and YouTube after this is completed. Next, we'll move on to the film of the week and A Taste for Killing. Okay, Taste for Killing. This is an Italian-Spanish film production made in 1966. It was directed by Tonino Valeri. Uh, the story comes by Valeri. And the screenplay is by Victor Oz, whose real name is Victor Castro, Augusto Finoschi, Remigio Del Grosso, Sandro Continenza, Massimo Capricoli, and Leonardo Martin. As I've said before, most of the time when there's multiple people, who write the screenplay, the film isn't very good, but this one is an exception. The Italian title is Per Augusto de Usteri. Spanish title is Cazador de Recompensas. English titles are For the Taste of Killing and For a Taste of Killing. Uh, the cinematography is by Stelvio Massi. It's an Eastman Color and Cinemascope. Music is by Nico Fidenko. He sings the main song. He goes, Gusto de Isidero, and Lanky Fellow is sung by the Wilder Brothers. Hank Lanky Fellows is played by Craig Hill. Gus Kennebec is played by George Martin. Collins is played by Peter Carter. Molly slash Peggy Kennebec is played by Diana Martin. Isabel Kennebec is played by Rada Rosimoff. Mingo or Machete is played by George Wang. Aaron's is played by Franco Russell. Jefferson is played by Graham Sooty. We'll get to him in the bios. Sanchez is played by Fernando Sanjo. John Canabec is played by Jose Marco. Uh, one of the sheriffs is played by Lorenzo Robledo. And Steve is played by Sancho Gracia. Rodrigo, played by Manuel Martin. Peter, played by Jose Canaleos. And another recognizable name is the Army Captain, played by Frank Branham. Okay, in this film, the story goes, the bounty hunter Hank Lanky Fellows, Craig Hill, watches in a tank on a money transport from atop a distant ridge, but doesn't take action when all the soldiers escorting the money are killed. The leader of the bandit, Sanchez, played by Fernando Sancho, departs with two of his men to hide the money. He sends the rest of his gang to the next town in the uniforms of the soldiers they have just killed. Lanky starts stalking Sanchez and eventually kills him and his men. He then rides into town to return the stolen money to the rightful owners and helps them in wiping out the rest of the gang. <clears throat> Excuse me, the local banker and mine owner, uh, the banker is played by Franco Russell and, and the mine owner is played by Piero Lully. Ask him for his assistance for protection of a gold transport. 
against a bandit far more dangerous than Sanchez, an outlaw named Gus Kennebec, played by George Martin. Lankley glads, gladly accepts the offer because Kennebec is the man who has killed his brother years ago, and now he can get the reward and revenge. Uh, we learn that Kennebec has a wife and a child, which makes him a more sympathetic villain than in most spaghetti westerns. But because Kennebec killed Fellow's brother, this is more a revenge western than a greedy bounty killer flick. A nosy old timer adds to the drama. We seem to find a lot of old timers in spaghetti westerns. The final duel is a classic, but I won't reveal the ending for those who haven't seen it. Uh, this is available on French Blu ray. Otherwise, it's only available on DVD out of Japan, Spain, Italy, Germany, and the USA. As far as talking points are concerned, much like the beginning of the Forgotten Pistolero, we see a lone rider moving along a ridge line watching something below. When we see it as a military transport, uh, we also see that the rider is an outlaw, is what we think. When we see the convoy attack, the rider, rider only watches through the scope on his high-powered rifle. Once the attack is over and the money taken, the rider finally goes into action. With a rifle and a scope that can shoot further than anything the outlaws have and being an expert shot, fellow kills the gang and faces the three outlaws with the money and shows he's a proficient with a six gun as he is with his rifle. Uh, something we see uh, in several spaghetti westerns. Another scene is reminiscent of the man with no name. He rides to the small house and back. We learn fellows cannot read and only signs his name. He memorizes the faces and dollar rewards on the wanted posters, apparently a reference to lawman Bass Reeves. The revenge aspect for the killing of a family member here, fellow's, fellow's brother, was used in dozens of spaghetti westerns over the decades and were very popular. The main villain is not the devil incarnate like El Indio, but although he cares for his woman and young son, his character is left undeveloped. When he complains at the final showdown that Lanky has a better weapon, Lanky trades with him, and I won't divulge the ending, like I said. Plenty of familiar Spanish faces fill the roles of the supporting cast, which makes it look like a bigger film than it actually is. The town set is El Paso, created by Carlos Simi for a few dollars more. And we'll also see a small house where Fellows takes uh, refuge when he tracks Fernando Sancho and his two henchmen. It's called Pal Palascas del Alfaro, and it was used in several spaghetti westerns, include To Peppa, I Want Him Dead, and Shanghai Joe. Nico Fidenko's score is the main theme song. Lanky Fellow uh, are both classics of the genre. Uh, we also get a fantastic classic line in this film when Lanky Fellows tells George Martin, I never go where I can send a bullet. Okay, as far as bios, Hank Lanky Fellows was played by Craig Hill. Craig Hill was born Craig Hill Fowler on March 5th, 1926 in Los Angeles, California. He died in Madrid on April 21st, 2014 in Barcelona, Catalonia, Spain. He was married to Spanish actress Teresa Jim Paris, who was born in 1936, and she's still with us. They were married from 1990 to 2014. We covered him in much more detail on his own special episode number 39. George Martin played Gus Kennebec. He was born Francisco Martinez Solero in Barcelona, Spain, on September 18, 1937, and died in Miami, Florida, of COVID-19 on September 1, 2021. We covered him in his own special episode 45. Collins is played by actor Peter Collins, which is an alias for Piero Lulli. Piero Lulli was born Giusva Lulli in Florence, Italy on February 1st, 1923. He died in Rome on June 23rd, 1991. He was the younger brother of actor Foco Lulli, who was born in 1912. 
and died in 1970. We covered both of the brothers in detail in episode 85. Molly, or Peggy Kennebec, was played by Diana Martin. Diana Martin was born Patrizi Del Frate and was an Italian actress who had a short sixth film career from 63 to 67. She only appeared in one other spaghetti western as Nancy or Elizabeth Mulligan in 1964's Minnesota Clay, starring Cameron Mitchell. She worked as a costumer under her real name on The Crazy Adventures of Lennon Kobe in 1974. This was the second Carambola film. I can find no other biographical information on her, either under her real or her stage name. Okay, Isabel Konebeck, Kennebeck, played by Rada Rasimov. Rada Rasimov was born Rada Dishamovic on March 3rd, 1941 in Trieste, Friuli, Venice, Venezia, Giuli, Italy. She is the sister of the late actor Ivan Rasimov, who acted under the stage name of Sean Todd. We covered both of the Rasimovs in episode 85. Then we have Mingo or Machete, played by George Wang. George Wang was born Wang Chengyang in China on November 12, 1926. Uh, he died in Taiwan on March 27, 2015 of a heart attack. We covered him in his own special episode number 18. And last but not least, we have Jefferson, played by Graham Sooty. His real name is Eugenio Galladini. He was born in Rome, Italy sometime in the late 1897 and began his career in the theater in 1926, and then appeared in over 50 films and TV appearances between 1939 and 1972. Of those, 16 were spaghetti westerns, where he was usually credited as Graham Sooty. Another alias he acted under was Jim Bathlin. I found this year of birth from a newspaper I found online, but no other information is available that I can find. I'm guessing he died in the 1970s as his career ended in 1973. Okay, that ends that. We'll now go to CD or LP of the week. <clears throat> okay, CD, LP of the week is Pearl Geese. Gusto di Usideri, that's the taste of killing. And an unusual turnaround, the LP wasn't released until 2016. Usually the LP's released when the film was released or shortly thereafter, and then the CD wasn't released until years later. But the LP was released on Dago Red, number RED 230, has 24 tracks. Listening time is not listed, so I can't tell you how many... Uh, hours and minutes of listing time we have. The value for some reason is only 30 bucks. The CD was released on GDM, GDM 4137, and it contains 35 tracks. It contains the vocal Lanky Fellow sung by the Wilder Brothers. The value on this ranges from 22 to $65. Uh, as far as the composer, we've already composed, uh, con covered the Wilder brothers before, so I'll cover Nico Fidenko. Nico Fidenko was born Domenico Colorosi on January 24, 1933 in Rome. He was a composer, songwriter, singer, actor, and assistant director. He was married to actress Anna Maria Cerdo from 69 to 2022, who appeared in the 1963 film The Leopard. They have a daughter named Giandalina, Codorossi. Some of his more famous spaghetti western scores are for The Texican with Audie Murphy, I Want Him Dead, again with Craig Hill, Those Dirty Dogs with Johnny Garco and Stephen Boyd. He also scored many Joe D'Amato films. In 1984, he formed a musical group called Super Quattro, which sang nostalgic songs. The group disbanded in 1994. Nico died in Rome last year on November 19th. He was 89 years old. Okay, let's go to autograph of the week. Hmm. 
Okay, autograph of the week I have is Stephen Boyd. We covered him and what have or happened to those guys. Couldn't find a uh, picture of him in a Western outfit that I could get autographs. So I had to settle for that. Okay, let's move on to Book of the Week. Okay, very difficult to find Book of the Week anymore. There's been few that's been issued in the last couple of years, but I did come across this one I picked up. It's called Fantastic Western Italian. Author is by Alain Pelosato. It's in French. Came out in 2021. Has 111 pages. And the author reviews the main spaghetti westerns of the genre. He also reviews movies influenced by the spaghetti western genre and their political content. Uh, let's see if I can do this a little bit better. There we go. Mostly words, not a lot of pictures, few posters, most of them the posters we've seen before. So that'll do it for that. Here's a picture of the uh, CD of the week, front and back. Now we'll move to poster of the week, something a little different. Okay, I don't have a poster of the week for either of the films we covered, but I do have something I haven't shown you before. And these are our researchers' dreams, if we ever find them, but they're called call sheets. Still used today. They're usually slipped under the actor or the crew's door at night when he goes back to his room after a day of shooting, and they tell him what's going to happen the next day, whether he's involved in the shot or not. It gives a list of all the actors involved. It gives their character name. It gives the props are going to be used. It gives where it's going to be filmed, what time setup is, what time they're due on the set, all kinds of information on here. What's great is it lists the character actors that aren't included in the credits. So when you look on IMDb, like for Captain Apache, and it says President Grant, it's not listed. So who in the hell played President Grant? Well, luckily on these call sheets, and Dan Van Heusen gave me quite a few that he was in, it lists people like that. So we're able to find out who these character actors were and find out information that is IMDb under the actor's name, but it doesn't list their credits. So I've got several from uh, Cat Lowe, Captain Apache, a number of them that Dan was in. I've got some recent ones that uh, Neil Summer sent me. Doc West, done in the 80s. This is actually done in 2008. And uh, again, it shows everybody involved in the shot and everybody that uh, included in the cast. So they're great. If we could find out, you know, cast sheets from every Spaghetti Western that was ever filmed, you could really write a book on Spaghetti Westerns. But most of them were thrown away after the film was done. Very few actors kept them. So they're like hen's teeth to find. Okay, now let's move on to news of the week. Okay, news of the week. Since we're doing this uh, every other week, uh, the DVDs, DVDs, especially when there's a lot like this week, this week I'm going to give you some basics. And you can go to my... Uh, blog westerns all italiana you can go to the westerns all italiana facebook page and you can go to the spaghetti westerns database and find all of these that i'm giving you and you can find more detail on them anyways uh this week we have a new british combo blu-ray dvd release of blood money uh four classic westerns this was released on july 12th by arrow uh, the box contains the following films, $10,000 Blood Money, Vengeance is Mine, Find a Place to Die, The Dreaded Modelo. Uh, they are all brand new 2K restorations from the original 35 millimeter camera negatives by Aero Films with original Italian and English front, front and end titles. Also with restored lossless original Italian and English soundtracks. English subtitles for the Italian soundtracks, 
uh, English subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing for the English soundtracks, brand new introductions for each film by journalist and critic Fabio Malelli. Extras include photo galleries for all fil four films, illustrated collector's booklet featuring new writings by Howard Hughes, and that's the best release that's come out in the last two weeks. We've been looking forward to that one for six months. Uh, then there's a USA DVD release that fell through the cracks for me called Day of Stranger, which was released in 2019, directed by Tom Lee Rutter, starring Dale Shepard, Gary Baxter, Marianne Furande, and Gary Shale. It's on the Alpha Video label and contains one disc in English with a running time of 77 minutes. Extras include a commentary track by Tommy Lee Rutter, Strange Story of the Stranger. It's a featurette. Uh, premiere footage from the 2020 Horror on Sea Film Festival. It was released on February 14th of this year. Then we have the DVD release. I just found out about this week, thanks to Rob Word, who received a copy in the mail. It was released back on May 23rd. It's called Bullets for the Bad. It's a reissue of The Bounty Killer from 2018. It's directed by Chip Baker and stars Crispian Belfrage, Nadia Lanfranconi, Ethan McDowell, and Aaron Stilestra. It's released on Magdolia House Entertainment and contains one NTSC disc with a resolution of 1.78 HD. It's in English with a running time of 87 minutes. Then we have a new German Blu-ray DVD combo for Drei Dollar Bly. Three Dollars of Lead, a 1964 production directed by Pino Mercanti and starring Fred Bear, Evie Morandi, Francesco Nieto, and re was released July 14th on the Mediax Leonine label. It's a media book Blu-ray DVD release. We just covered this film a couple of weeks ago with three cover options. Also released on a single disc, Blu-ray, and separately on DVD. It's in DTS-HDMA, German, Italian, mono, with no subtitles. It runs 91 minutes, and the extras include a booklet and a photo gallery. Uh, then we have three new Spanish Lucky Luke Blu-rays. Uh, Lucky Luke El Intrepido, which is Daisy Town, came out in 71. Lucky Luke La Ballada de los Daltons. Lucky Luke Ballad of the Daltons came out in 76. Lucky Luke, La Fuga de los Dalton. Lucky Luke, Dalton's on the Loose, came out in 83. All three were released July 20th on the Lamento label. They're in Spanish with Ch Spanish subtitles, and all are 80 minutes in length. Last but not least on the DVD Blu-rays is a German DVD of Tal der Hoffnung, Clint the Stranger, came out in 67. Directed by Alfonso Balcazar and stars George Martin, Mariana Koch, Palo Goslino and Walter Barnes. It was released on July 21st of this year on the Banker Films Cargo Records label. Two different cover options are available, featuring alternate German titles of the film and is limited to 500 copies each. And it includes a booklet. Like I said, you can find more information on the uh, Westerns All Italiana blog, Facebook page, and Spaghetti Westerns database. In Boot Hill, we have two passings. First one is Laird Koenig. Laird Koenig also wrote, uh, who he wrote, The Little Girl Who Lives Down the Lane. He died in Santa Barbara, California on June 30th. He was 95. Koenig was an American author and screenwriter whose novel was adapted into the 1976 Jodie Foster led horror movie of the same name. Koenig was born on September 14th, 1927, in Seattle and would go on to attend the University of Washington, collaborate with extensively throughout his career. I'm sorry, he went to the University of Washington and worked in advertising before being approached by Peter L. Dixon, who he would collaborate with extensively throughout his career, and went on to write for the adventure television series Flipper. Several of his novels were adapted for the big screen, including, including his 1970 novel, the Children Are Watching, which turned into the 1978 Attention Lay Softly and the 1968 film Rockabye. He notably wrote the screenplay for several Terrence Young films, including his only Bureau Western, Red Sun, 
which starred Charles Bronson, uh, Bloodline, which starred Audrey Hepburn, and Inchon with Ben Gazzara. A uh, regular listener and friend, Michael Koenig, tells me he's not related directly to uh, Laird. Then we have Carlin Glynn, Tony winning star Carlin Glynn and mother of Mary Stuart Masterson died of lung cancer on July 13th in New York. She was 83. She was an actor and singer earning a Tony Award in 1979 for her Broadway debut in the original production of The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas. Glynn worked on a production alongside her husband, Peter Masterson, who later adapted the show into the 1980 film of the same name starring Burt Reynolds and Dolly Parton. Glynn appeared in the 1989 Euro Western Blood Red as Miss Jeffries. The film starred Eric Roberts, Dennis Hopper, and Giancarlo Giannini. Okay, that'll wrap it up for this week. Again, uh, Jay and I are going to take a few weeks off because we have some uh, business that has to be attended to and to work on our technical difficulties that we've been having with this database we've been using. We may switch it back to Steamline. Anyways, this has been a Roberto Genesi production, and we'll see you down the road. We'll keep you posted. Thanks, amigo, and adios. Have a good one.